An 8-year-old boy presents to the pediatric emergency department after developing difficulties with his breathing. His, he, this developed suddenly while the boy was at a friend's birthday party. The child is in significant respiratory distress and is utilizing accessory muscles when breathing. On examination of his chest, you see a widespread urticarial rash and on auscultation, there is widespread wheeze. What emergency treatment do you administer? So what are we suspecting here? Eight-year-old breathing difficulties, right? Suddenly, while at a friend's birthday party, significant respiratory distress, utilizing accessory muscles. You see widespread urticarial rash, okay? Right now, you're already suspecting anaphylaxis, something he ate at a birthday party, or maybe a bee sting there. Widespread wheeze, that's fast, uh, bronchoconstriction here. Always adrenaline. But what is the dose? So what emergency treatment do you administer? Pediatrics dose of adrenaline is a little bit different than the adults. Uh, it's not good to memorize doses if you have bad memory. Like me. These are quite important doses to remember. I think it's um, 500 micrograms for adults and then 300 micrograms for children. It actually depends on the age of the child. The younger, the less, the smaller the dose. I don't remember the exact dose for 8-year-old, but we'll see. So the answer is 300 micrograms of 1 in 1,000 adrenaline intramuscular. Anaphylaxis, a child aged 6 to 11 years, should be administered adrenaline at a dose of 300 micrograms of zero, uh, also 0 0.3 ml repeated every 5 minutes if necessary. The correct answer is 300 micrograms of 1 in 1000 adrenaline IM. This is the appropriate dose for a child aged 6 to 12 years. Adrenaline is by far the most important drug in anaphylaxis and should be given as soon as possible. 5-MG chlorphenamine IV is a correct dose for a child aged 6 to 12 years, but in this scenario, administration of adrenaline is more important initially. Chlorphenamine is an antihistamine which can be given as well, but adrenaline is more important. 100-MG hydrocortisone IV is the correct dose for a child aged 6 to 12 years, but again, administration of adrenaline is more important initially. This is a steroid. Okay. 150 micrograms of 1 in 100 adrenaline IM is the correct dose for a child aged less than 6 years. Okay, 500 micrograms of 1 in 100 adrenaline IM is the correct dose for an adult or a child above 12 years. So 6 to 12 years is 300 mg. Less than 6 is 100 uh, mg. 300 micrograms. Less than 6 years is 150 micrograms. More than 12 years old is 500 micrograms. Let's um, revise on the, yeah, anaphylaxis guidelines from Resus Council UK. It's quite important. It would be quite a long detour. So, quite a long tangent. But it's worth learning. We might go through the whole document here. Why is this? Okay, this is the correct website. Hmm, where's your PDF document? Emergency treatment of anaphylactic reactions. Okay, this is the one. Guidelines. Yes, okay, this is the document that I want to look at. Close this osteoporosis thing. Okay, now we're going to a tangent here. We're going to learn about the guidelines for anaphylaxis treatment. It's an emergency. You should know this at the back of your head if you're working as a doctor, I think. And you've got no time to refer in these scenarios. Okay, so how updated is this guideline? 2020? 
review date 2016 so it is about five years old which is still relevant because anaphylaxis doesn't change very much unless you have a new technology to treat it but the current technology is quite good already an introduction purpose of this guideline the uk incidence of anaphylactic reactions is rising despite previous guidelines there is confusion about the diagnosis treatment investigation and follow-up of patients who have an anaphylactic reaction the guideline replaces the previous guidance from Resuscita resuscitation council uk the emergency medical management of anaphylactic reactions for first medical responders and community, community nurses this guideline gives an updated consensus about the recognition and treatment of anaphylactic reactions, a greater focus on the treatments that a patient having an anaphylactic reaction should re receive. There is less emphasis on specifying treatments according to which specific groups of healthcare providers should give them um, recommendations for treatment that are simple to learn and easy to implement and that will be appropriate for most anaphylactic reactions. There are no randomized control clinical trials in humans providing unequivocal evidence for the treatment of anaphylactic reactions. Moreover, such evidence is unlikely to be forthcoming in the near future because it's unethical to hold these kind of studies. Nonetheless, there is a wealth of experience and systemic reviews of the limited evidence that can be used as a resource. The guideline will not cover every possible scenario involving an anaphylactic reaction. The guidance has been written to be as simple as possible to enable improved teaching, learning, and implementation involve improved implementation should benefit more patients who have an anaphylactic reaction okay key points Treatment of an anaphylactic reaction should be based on general life support principles. Use ABCDE approach to recognize and treat problems. Call for help early. Treat the greatest threat to life first, which is A first. Initial uh, treatment should not be delayed by the lack of complete history or definitive diagnosis. Patients having an anaphylactic reaction in any setting should expect the following as a minimum recognition that they are seriously unwell, an early call for help, initial assessment and treatments based on ABCD approach, adrenaline therapy if indicated, investigation and follow up by an allergy specialist. There's an appendix on the ABCD approach. Methods. Organizations involved in the previous guidelines nominated individuals for the working group co-chairs okay not important the uh, methods of this guideline uh, production okay let's go straight into the content definition of anaphylaxis a pre precise definition of anaphylaxis is not important it's not important for the, the emergency treatment of an anaphylactic reaction okay there is no universally agreed definition the european academy of allergology and clinical immunology nomenclature committee proposed the following broad definition anaphylaxis is a severe life-threatening generalized or systemic hypersensitivity reaction this is characterized by a rapidly developing life-threatening airway and or breathing and or circulation problems usually associated with skin and mucosal changes epidemiology one of the problems is that anaphylaxis is not always recognized, so certain UK studies may underestimate their incidence. Also, as the criteria for inclusion vary in different studies and countries, a picture has to be built up from different sources. Incidence rate, an American college of, the American College of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology, Epidemiology of Anaphylaxis Working Group summarized the findings from a number of important national epidemiological studies and concluded, concluded that overall frequency of episodes of anaphylaxis using current data lies between 30 and 950 cases per 100,000 persons per year. Lifetime prevalence. The same group provided data indicating a lifetime prevalence between 50 and 2,000 episodes per 1,000 persons, 100,000 persons, or 0.05 to 2%. More recent UK primary care data con con concur, indicating a lifetime age standardized prevalence of a recorded diagnosis of anaphylaxis of 75.5 per 100,000 in 2005. Calculations based on this data indicate that approximately 1 in 1,333 of the English population have experienced anaphylaxis at some point in their lives. 
other data, a retrospective study of emergency department attendances, identifying only the most severe cases and relating this number to the population served, estimated that approximately 1 in 3,500 patients have an episode of anaphylaxis during the study period. Taking specific causes of anaphylaxis where prevalence and severity data are available, there are 1 million cases of venom anaphylaxis and 0.4 million cases of nut anaphylaxis up to the age of 44 years worldwide. Triggers. Okay, this is interesting. Triggers. Anaphylaxis can be triggered by any of a very broad range of triggers, but those most commonly identified include food, drugs, and venom. The relative importance of this very uh, varies very considerably with age, the food being particularly important in children and medicinal products being much more common triggers in older people. Virtually any food or class of drug can be implicated, although the classes of food and drugs responsible for the majority of reactions are well described. Of foods, nuts are the most common cause, muscle relaxants, antibiotics and NSAIDs are, and aspirins are the most commonly implicated drugs. It is important to note that in many cases, no cause can be identified. A significant number of cases of anaphylaxis are idiopathic, non-IgE mediated. So stings, you got nuts, you got foods, you got food possible cause, antibiotics, anesthetic drugs, other drugs, Contrast media, others, it takes her. NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, ease in bitters, oh, these are acronyms, mortality. The overall prognosis of anaphylax is good with a case fertility ratio of less than 1% reported in most population-based studies. Risk of death is, however, increased in those with pre-existing asthma, particularly if the asthma is poorly controlled or in those asthmatics who fail to use or delay treatment with adrenaline. There are approximately 20 anaphylaxis deaths reported each year in the UK, although this may be a substantial underestimate. Risk of recurrence, the risk of individuals suffering recurrent anaphylactic reaction appears to be quite substantial, being estimated approximately 1 in 12 per year. Trends over time. There are very limited data on trends in anaphylaxis internationally, but data indicate a dramatic increase in the rate of hospital admissions for anaphylaxis. This increases from 0 0.5 to 3.6 admissions per 100,000 between 1990 and 2004, and an increase, an increase of 700%. What's ICD change? And then classification of diseases. Okay, time course for fatal anaphylactic reactions. Okay, depending on the cause, oh, there's different time courses. When anaphylaxis is fatal, death usually occurs very soon after contact with the trigger. From a case series, fatal food reactions cause respiratory arrest typically after 30 to 35 minutes. Insect stings cause collapse from shock after 10 to 15 minutes. And deaths caused by intravenous medication occur most commonly within 5 minutes. Death never occurred more than 6 hours after contact with the trigger. Okay, so the fastest action is IV drugs, intravenous drugs, because it goes straight into your... Um, into your blood circulation. So within five minutes, the reaction stop, uh, occurs. The second most, uh, the second fastest is intramuscular or intradermal, which are from insect stings, which come, uh, cause shock after 10 to 15 minutes. And the slowest one is foods. Foods has to pass through the mucosa, right? Typically after. 30 to 35 minutes. So you can see here the time of arrest. The fastest are drugs, injected drugs. Then comes the pink color one, which is stinks. Pink or purple color ones. Then the blue color one is food. Oral drugs are quite slow as well. So yeah, similar to food. Okay, time to cardiac arrest following exposure to triggering agent. Okay. Oh, oops. Accident, accident. Where were we here? Okay. Recognition of an anaphylactic reaction. 
A diagnosis of anaphylactic reaction is likely if a patient who is exposed to a trigger allergen develops a sudden illness, usually within minutes of exposure, with rapidly progressing skin changes and a life-threatening airway and or breathing or circulation problems. The reaction is usually unexpected. The lack of any consistent clinical manifestation and a range of possible presentations cause diagnostic difficulty. Many patients with a genuine anaphylactic reaction are not given the correct treatment. Patients have been given in injections of adrenaline inappropriately for allergic reactions just involving the skin or for vasovagal reactions or panic attacks. Diagnostic problems have um, arisen particularly in children. Guidelines for the treatment of an anaphylactic reaction must therefore take into account some inevitable diagnostic errors with an emphasis on the need for safety. A single net or the single set of criteria will not identify all anaphylactic reactions. There is a range of signs and symptoms, none of which are entirely specific for an anaphylactic reaction. However, certain combinations of signs make it make the diagnosis of, of an anaphylactic reaction more likely. When recognizing and treating treating any acutely ill patient or rational ABC approach must be followed and life threatening problems treated as they are recognized. See appendix one for more information on the ABCD approach. Anaphylaxis is likely when all of the following three criteria are met, sudden onset and rapid progression of symptoms, life threatening airway, all, all of the three following criteria, okay, sudden onset and rapid progression of symptoms, okay, that's the onset, life threatening airway and or breathing or circulation problems, and skin or mucosal changes, flushing of the carrier and geodema. The following supports the diagnosis. Um, exposure to a known allergen for the patient. Remember, skin or mucosal changes alone are not a sign of anaphylactic reaction. Skin and mucosal changes can be subtle or absent in about 20% of reactions. Some patients can have only a decrease in blood pressure, i.e. circulation problem. Skin and mucosal changes can be subtle or absent in about 20% of reactions. Some patients have only a decrease in blood pressure. There can also be gastrointestinal problems, for example, vomiting, abdominal pain, incontinence. Confusion arises because some patients have systemic allergic reactions that are less severe. For example, generalized urticaria, angioedema, and rhinitis will not be described as an anaphylactic reaction because the life threatening features and airway problem, respiratory difficulty, breathing problem, and hypotension security problem are not present. Sudden onset and rapid progression of symptoms. The patient will feel and look unwell. Most reactions occur over several minutes. Rarely reactions may be slower in onset. The time of onset of an anaphylactic reaction depends on the type of trigger. An intravenous trigger will cause a more rapid onset of reaction than stings, which in turn tend to cause a more rapid onset than orally ingested triggers. The patient is usually anxious and can experience a sense of impending doom. Life-threatening airway breathing or circulation problems. Patients can have either an A, B, or C problem or any combination. Use the ABCDE approach to recognize these. Airway problems, airway swelling, for example, throat and tongue swelling, pharyngeal or laryngeal edema. The patient has difficulty in breathing and swallowing and feels that the throat is closing up. Hoarse voice, strider, is high-pitched inspiratory noise caused by upper airway obstruction. Breathing problems, shortness of breath, increased respiratory rate, wheeze, Patient becoming tired, confusion caused by hypoxia, cyanosis appears blue, this is a late sign, respiratory arrest. There's a range of presentation from anaphylaxis to anaphylaxis with predominantly asthmatic features to a pure or acute asthmatic attack with no other features of anaphylaxis. Life threatening asthma with no features of anaphylaxis can be triggered by food allergy. Anaphylaxis can present as a primary respiratory arrest. Mm, circulation problems. Signs of shock, pale, clammy. Oh, okay, we talk about um, airway and breathing. Now we're talking about circulation problems, right? So signs of shock, pale, clammy, increased pulse rate, tachycardia, low blood pressure, hypotension, feeling faint, dizziness, collapse, decreased consciousness level, loss of consciousness. Anaphylaxis can cause myocardial ischemia and electrocardiograph. ECG changes, even in individuals with normal coronary arteries, cardiac arrest. Okay. Circulation problems, often referred to as anaphylactic shock, can be caused by direct myocardial depression, vasodilation, and capillary leak, and loss of fluids from the circulation. Bradycardia is a slow pulse. Uh, bradycardia, a slow pulse, is usually a late feature, often preceding, preceding cardiac arrest. The circulatory effects do not respond or respond only transiently to simple measures such as lying the patient down and raising the legs. Patients with anaphylaxis can deteriorate if made to sit up or stand up. 
The above airway breathing circulation problems can all alter the patient's neurological status disability problems because of decreased brain perfusion. They may be confusion, agitation, and loss of consciousness. Patients can also have gastrointestinal symptoms, abdominal pain, incontinence, vomiting, skin, iron, or mucosal changes. They should be assessed as part of the exposure when using the ABCD approach. They are often the first feature to present in over 80% of anaphylactic reactions. They can be subtle or dramatic. They may be just skin, just mucosa, or both skin and mucosa changes. They may be erythema, a patchy, a generalized red rash. There may be urticaria, also called hives, nettle rash, wheels, or welts, which can appear anywhere on the body. The wheels may be pale, pink, or red, and may look like nettle stings. They can be different shapes and sizes, and are often surrounded by red flare. They are usually itchy. I just search to give you a picture of an urticarial rash. Looks like this. Yes, this is very typical. It's typically swollen a bit. It's raised lesions. So next time you see this, you suspect anaphylaxis, you know? Where were we? Skin and mucosal changes. Ooh, accidentally swiped back again. Uh, okay, we were at A, B, C, D, E after E, right? Skin and mucosal changes. Okay, differential diagnosis, life-threatening conditions. Sometimes an anaphylactic reaction can present with symptoms and signs that are very similar to life-threatening asthma. This is the commonest in children. A low blood pressure or normal in children with a particular or papillary rash can be a sign of septic shock. Seek help early if there are any doubts that the diagnosis are about the diagnosis and treatment. Follow the ABCD approach will help with treating the differential diagnosis. Non-life-threatening conditions, these usually respond to similar measures. Faint, vasovagal episode, panic attack, breath-holding episodes in a child, idiopathic, non-allergic urticaria, or angioedema. Okay. Treatment of an anaphylactic reaction. So this is what we are waiting for. Oh no! Why do I keep accidentally going back? Mm. Oh, there's an algorithm here as well. That's very helpful. But I want to go through the text first. As the diagnosis of anaphylaxis is not always obvious, all those who treat anaphylaxis must have a systemic approach to the sick patient. In general, the clinical signs of critical illness are similar with whatever the analytic process because they reflect failing respiratory, cardiovascular, and neurological systems i.e. ABCDE problems. Use the ABCDE approach to recognize and treat an anaphylactic reaction. Treat life-threatening problems as you find them. The basic principles of treatment are the same for all age groups. The specific treatment of an anaphylactic reaction depends on the location, the training and skills of rescuers, the number of responders, the equipment and drugs available. The location. Treating a patient with anaphylaxis in the community will not be the same as in an acute hospital. Out of hospital, an ambulance must be called early and the patient transported to emergency department. Training of rescuers. All clinical staff should be able to call for help and initiate treatment in a patient with an anaphylactic reaction. Rescuers must use the skills for which they are trained. Clinical staff who give parenteral medication should have initial training and regular updates in dealing with anaphylactic reactions. The Health Protection Agency recommends that staff who give immunizations should have annual updates. Number of responses. The single responder must always ensure that help is coming. If there are several rescuers, several actions can be undertaken simultaneously. Equipment and drugs available. Resuscitation equipment and drugs to help with the rapid resuscitation of a patient with an anaphylactic reaction must be immediately, immediately available in all clinical settings. Clinical staff should be familiar with the equipment and drugs that they have available and should check them regularly. All patients who have had an anaphylactic reaction should be monitored, for example, by ambulance crew in emergency department as soon as possible. Minimal monitoring includes Pulse oximetry, non-invasive blood pressure, and 3D ECG monitoring must be supervised by an individual who is skilled at interpreting and responding to any changes. Patients having an anaphylactic reaction in any setting should expect the following as a minimum. Recognition that they are seriously unwell and early call for help 
initial assessment and treatments based on ABCD approach, adrenaline therapy if indicated, investigation and follow-up by allergy specialists. Patient positioning. All patients should be placed in a comfortable position. The following factors should be considered. Patients with airway and breathing problems may prefer to sit up as this will make breathing easier. Lying flat with or without leg elevation is helpful for patients with a low blood pressure circulation problem. If the patient feels faint, do not sit or stand them up. This can cause cardiac arrest. Patients who are breathing and unconscious should be placed on their side in the recovery position. Pa pregnant patients should lie on their left side left side to prevent cable compression yeah because so your vena cover is slightly on your right right yeah yeah vena cover is slightly on your right so you gotta tilt to the left side a little all right remove the trigger if possible removing the trigger for an anaphylactic reaction is not always possible Okay. So stop any drug suspected of causing an anaphylactic reaction. For example, stop an intravenous infusion of a gelatin or solution or antibiotic. Remove the stinger after a bee sting. Early removal is more important than the method of removal. After food-induced anaphylaxis, attempts to make the patient vomit are not recommended. Do not delay definitive treatment if removing the trigger is not feasible. Resuscitation Council UK. Cardiorespiratory arrest following an anaphylactic reaction. Start cardiopulmonary resuscitation immediately and follow current guidelines. Rescuers should ensure that help is on its way as early advanced life support is essential. Use doses of adrenaline recommended in the ALS guidelines. The intramuscular route for adrenaline is not recommended after cardiac arrest has occurred. What? Again? Sorry, wasn't paying attention. Oh no! Uh, okay okay where were we remove oh man this two fingers swipe thing sideways too sensitive i'll get used to it okay remove the trigger if possible CPR, follow a uh, cardiorespiratory arrest following an infective reaction. Start CPR immediately and follow current guidelines. Rescuers should ensure that help is on its way, as early advanced life support, uh, early advanced life support is essential. Use doses of adrenaline recommended in the ALS guidelines. The intramuscular route for adrenaline is not recommended after cardiac arrest has occurred. Okay, so um, in the cases of uh, anaphylaxis, right, uh, you want to give an intramuscular adrenaline. Um, which is uh, 0 0.5 mg of 500 micrograms, 0 0.5 milligrams of 500 micrograms of 1 in 1,000 um, adrenaline injected intramuscularly in the uh, middle outer part of the thigh. This is what you do usually in the community. Whereas in CPR, right, in adult life support, the adrenaline is inserted intravenously and is 1 mg, if I'm not mistaken. 1 mg of adrenaline instead of 0 0.5 mg. Yeah. Check the dose. Don't quote me on that. Anaphylaxis algorithm. The key steps for the treatment of an anaphylactic reaction are shown in the algorithm in the next page. So this is the algorithm. Uh, no, why do I keep doing this? Algorithm. Okay, let's end on this algorithm, right? Is there anything else here? Nothing else, right? For specialist use only, special populations, auto injectors, fluids, antihistamines, steroids, other drugs. Okay, these are quite important as well. Must sell trip days. Okay, this is a very in interesting thing. Record keeping, patient education. Okay, let's just finish the document, all right, for completeness sake. 
can stop watching this video anytime if you're tired of me talking but under and all this okay anaphylactic reaction ABCDE diagnosis look for acute onset of illness life-threatening airway or breathing or circulation problems and you and and unusually skin changes okay so this is diagnosis of an effect this these three criteria call for help lie patient flat if they are circulation if their blood pressure is low lie them flat you know raise the patient's legs adrenaline oh i forgot about removing the source huh if the iv source you can remove the iv if there's bee sting remove the bee sting okay call for help adrenaline when skills and equipment available, establish the airway, high flow oxygen, IV fluid challenge, chlorphenamine, hydrocortisone. So, airway breathing, establish airway. Breathing is give oxygen if oxygen saturation is low. IV fluid challenge is circulation if blood pressure is low. Chlorphenamine is antihistamine and hydrocortisone is a steroid. Monitor, pulse oximetry, ECG, blood pressure. So, all the vital signs oxygen ecg blood pressure life-threatening problems airway swelling hoarseness rider breathing rapid breathing wheeze fatigue cyanosis spo2 less than 92 percent confusion circulation pale clammy low blood pressure faintness drowsy coma so you want to give adrenaline adrenaline give im unless experienced with iv adrenaline im doses of one in one thousand adrenaline repeated after five minutes is no better in louts the dose is 500 micrograms or 0 0.5 ml children more than 12 years is same as adults 500 micrograms children 6 to 12 years 300 less than six years 150. adrenaline iv to be given only by experienced specialists titrate adults 50 microgram children one microgram okay don't learn about the iv one because it's quite dangerous very dangerous that you get the doses wrong i am it's like a fixed dose just inject iv fluid challenge adult 500 to 1000 ml child crystalloid 20 ml per kg okay stop iv colloid if this might be the cause of an anaphylaxis uh, over here you have the doses for your antihistamine which is your chlorphenamine you can give im or iv hydrocortisone as well im or slow iv adult 10 mg okay these are not important doses to remember these doses you can refer to your pnf adrenaline you should give very fast you can refer fast to your pnf that's good for you just remember okay so these are the drugs I and mean, they'll explain well what each of these drugs do oh no okay okay adrenaline is the most important drug for the treatment of anaphylactic reaction although there are no randomized controlled trials Adrenaline is a logical treatment as there is consistent anecdotal evidence supporting its use to ease breathing difficulty and restore adequate cardiac output as an alpha receptor agonist. It reverses peripheral vasodilation and reduces edema. Its beta receptor activity dilates the bronchial airways, increases the force of myocardial contraction, and suppresses histamine and leukotriene release. There are also beta-2 adrenergic adrenergic receptors on mast cells that inhibit activation and so early adrenaline attenuates the severity of IgE mediated allergic reactions. Adrenaline seems to work best when given early after the onset of the reaction but it's not without risk particularly given intravenously adverse effects are extremely rare with correct doses injected mass intramuscularly. Sim sometimes there has been uncertainty about whether complications for example myocardial ischemia have been caused by the allergen itself or by the adrenaline given to treat it. Difficulties can arise if the clinical picture is evolving when the patient is first assessed. Adrenaline should be given to all patients with life-threatening features. If these features are absent, but there are other features of a systemic allergic reaction, the patient needs careful observation and symptomatic treatment using the ABCDE approach. Adrenaline must be readily available in clinical areas where an anaphylactic reaction could occur. Intramuscular adrenaline. The intramuscular route is the best for most individuals who have to give adrenaline to treat an anaphylactic reaction. 
monitor the patient as soon as possible, pulse, blood pressure, ECG, pulse oximetry. This will help monitor the response to adrenaline. The IM route has several benefits. There's a greater margin of safety. It does not require intravenous access. The IM route is easier to learn. The best site for IM injection is the anterior lateral aspect of the middle third of the thigh. Anterior lateral aspect of the middle third of the thigh. The needle used for injection needs to be sufficiently long to ensure that the adrenaline is injected into the muscle. Okay, the subcutaneous or inhaled routes for adrenaline are not recommended for the treatment of anaphylactic reaction because they are less effective. It's talking about the dose again. Repeat the IM adrenaline dose if there is no improvement in the patient's condition. Further doses can be given about 5 minute intervals according to the patient's response. IV adrenaline in specialist use only, so I won't read about this because I'm not a specialist. Again, oh no, I'm getting frustrated. Okay, sorry. Mm. Mm. Adrenaline. After adrenaline, you talk about chlorphenamine, right? No, adrenaline is special. Okay. Hmm. Uh, should I remove the swipe to go back? Oh, there's no option to pause recording, huh? How long has it been? 36 minutes? I'll show you if I can finish this. Let's see what classes do I have today. Mm. I think I have a risky session today. What time is it? 12.45. Okay, I have a little bit of time. I'll just adjust the settings a little. Uh, okay, please turn on the screen so I don't see it. Trackpad. Scroll and zoom. Zoom in or out. No more gestures. Swipe between pages. Launch patch for desktop. Mission controls. Hmm. So it between pages, scroll left or right with two fingers. Okay, this is good. Uh, when else do I use this? PowerPoint? Hmm. Let's disable this and try it for a few days. Let's see if it affects us too much. Okay. Yay, no more. No more accidentally going back. Okay, let's see. Where were we? Adrenaline in special populations. Okay. Previous guidelines recommended adrenaline dose adjustment in certain circumstances. For example, in patients taking tricyclic antidepressants, the previous recommendation was to give half the dose. Um, okay, this is a little bit too detailed for us. Adrenaline auto-injectors. Okay, so this is for their own use. At the time of writing, there are only two doses of adrenaline auto-injectors commonly available, 0 0.15 and 0 0.3 mg. The more appropriate dose for an auto-injector should be prescribed for individual patients for allergy specialists by allergy specialists. Healthcare professionals should be familiar with the use of most commonly available auto-injector devices. The dose recommendations for adrenaline is the in, in the guidelines are intended for healthcare professional providers treating an anaphylactic reaction. If an adrenaline auto-injector is the only available adrenaline preparation when treating anaphylaxis, healthcare providers should use it. Oxygen give as soon as possible. Initially, give the highest concentration of oxygen possible using a mask with an oxygen reservoir. 
Ensure high flow of children usually greater than 10 liters per minute to prevent collapse of the reservoir during inspiration. If the patient's trachea is intubated, ventilate the lungs with high concentration of oxygen using self-inflating bag. Fluids give as soon as possible. Large volumes of fluid may leak from the patient's circulation during an anaphylactic reaction. There will also be vasodilation, a low blood pressure, and signs of shock. If there is intravenous excess, use intravenous fluids. Infuse intravenous fluids immediately. Give a rapid IV fluid challenge, 20 ml per kg in a child or 500 to 1000 ml in an adult, and monitor the response. Give further doses as necessary. There is no evidence to support the use of colloids over crystalloids in this setting. Consider colloid infusion in a cause, uh, in a as a cause in a patient receiving colloid at the time of onset of anaphylactic reaction and stop the infusion. Hartman's solution or 0.9% saline are suitable fluids for initial resuscitation. A large volume of fluid may be needed. If intravenous access is delayed or impossible, the intraosseous route can be used for fluids or drugs when resuscitating children or adults, but only by healthcare workers who are customized to, accustomed to do so. Do not delay the administration of IV adrenaline attempting intraosseous access. Okay, so we'll talk about adrenaline. Now we'll talk about antihistamines. Antihistamines we we'll talk about fluids as well. Antihistamines. Antihistamines are a second line treatment for an anaphylactic reaction. The evidence to support their use is weak, but there are logical reasons for them. Antihistamines, H1 antihistamines, may help counter histamine related vasodilation and bronchoconstriction. They may not help in reactions depending on part on other mediators, but they have the virtue of safety. Use alone, they would add. And they are unlikely to be life-saving in a true anaphylactic reaction. Inject chlorpheniline slowly, intravenously, or intramuscularly. The dose of chlorpheniline depends on age, more than 12 years. Okay, and no use remembering the dose here. There's little evidence to support the routine use of H2 antihistamine, for example, ranitidine, cementidine, for the initial treatment of an anaphylactic reaction. These are more of... Um, for stomach, you know, H2, H1 is for anaphylaxis. Okay, steroids. Give after initial resuscitation. Okay, corticosteroids may help prevent or shorten protracted reactions. In asthma, early corticosteroids is beneficial in adults and children. There is little evidence on which of these or which to base the optimum dose of hydrocortisone and anaphylaxis. In hospital patients with asthma, high doses of hydrocortisone do not seem to be better than smaller doses. Inject hydrocortisone slowly, intravenously, or intramuscularly, taking care to avoid inducing further hypotension. The dose of hydrocortisone for adults and children depends on H. Here are the doses. Other drugs. Bronchodilators. The presenting symptoms and signs of a severe anaphylactic reaction and life-threatening asthma can be the same. If the patient has asthma-like features alone, follow the British Thoracic Society signed asthma guidelines. As well as drugs listed above, consider further bronchodilator therapy with salbutamol inhale or IV, ipratropium inhale, aminophylline IV or magnesium IV. Remember that intravenous magnesium is a vasodilator and cause hot flushes and make hypotension worse. Cardiac drugs. Adrenaline remains the first line vasopressor for the treatment of anaphylactic reactions. There are animal studies and case reports describing the use of other vasopressors and inotropes, noradrenaline, vasopressin, metoreminol, and glucagon when initial resuscitation of adrenaline and fluids has not been successful. Only the use of these drugs in specialty settings, only use these drugs in specialty settings. For example, intensive care units where there is experience in their use. Glucagon can be useful to help an anaphylactic reaction. Uh, an, an anaphylactic reaction in a patient taking a beta blocker. Some patients develop severe bradycardia after an anaphylactic reaction because they IV atropine to treat this. Atropine is an anti masculinic, right? Investigations, okay, must cells, must cells treat these. Undertake the usual investigations appropriate for medical emergency. For example, your 12 lead ECG, your chest X-ray, urea and electrolytes, arterial blood gas, etc. Must cell trip days. The specific test to help confirm a diagnosis of an anaphylactic reaction is measurement of mast cell trip days. Triptase is the major protein component of the mast cell secretory granules. In anaphylaxis, mast cell degranulation leads to markedly increased blood triptase concentration. 
Tryptase levels are useful in the follow-up of suspected anaphylactic reactions, not in the initial recognition and treatment. Measuring tryptase levels must not delay initial resuscitation. Tryptase concentrations in the blood may not increase significantly until 30 minutes or more after the onset of symptoms and peak 1 to 2 hours after onset. The half-life of tryptase is short, approximately 2 hours, and concentrations may be back to normal within 6 to 8 hours, so timing of any blood samples is very important. This is the suggested time cost for the appearance of tryptase in cerebral plasma during systemic anaphylaxis. Reproduce and adapted with permission from Elsevier. Save so 100% maximal tryptase level at about one hour. And after that, it goes down. So, the time of onset of the anaphylactic reaction is a time when symptoms were first noticed. It is important that this time is accurately recorded. Minimum one sample at one to two hours after the start of symptoms. Ideally, three time samples. Initial uh, sample as soon as feasible after resuscitation has started. Do not delay resuscitation to take the sample. Second sample at one to two hours after the start of symptoms. And third sample either at 24 hours or in a convalescence, for example, in a follow-up allergic clinic. This provides baseline tryptase levels. Some individuals have an elevated baseline level. Because by 24 hours, you should already resolve this. 4 hours, by 24, if you extrapolate the graph, probably it resolve already. Sample requirements. Use a serum or clotted blood liver function test bottle sample. Some laboratories ask for plasma sample. Either plasma or serum samples can be tested. Record the timing of each sample accurately on the sample bottle and request form. State on the request form the time of onset of the reaction symptoms. Record on the sample bottle the number of minutes or hours after the onset of symptoms the sample was taken. As little as 0.5 ml sample can be enough in children, but 5 ml adults is better. Optimally store the serum from spun samples frozen in, at the negative 20 degrees Celsius in the local laboratory before dispatch to a reference laboratory. Triptase is very stable. 50% of the triptase is still detectable after 4 days at room temperature. So even samples stored at room temperature over a weekend can give useful though suboptimal information. Consult your local laboratory if you have any queries. So at minimum, you must take one sample at one to two hours after the start of symptoms. But ideally, you give you take three samples from C as the rise and fall of the seven trip days levels, as you can see. Here, it rises and peaks at about one hour, falls after that. This is for confirmatory diagnosis of anaphylaxis. Discharge and follow up, record keeping, reporting of action, reaction, when to prescribe adrenaline auto injector. Basically, I'll tell them to avoid the triggers and teach them how to use the auto injector if they are provided with it. Okay, uh, that's all.